All right, so in this video, I wanna show you how to graph the tangent function fast, because I think a lot of times when students need to identify or look at the tangent function, or maybe even graph the tangent function with transformations, they don't know what the parent graph looks like. They always forget it. They confuse it with cotangent or what exactly the shape is and where are the points. So let's just cover the basics of how you can graph tangent very, very quickly, but also understand it and remember it. And even if you do forget it, you always have a great way to go back to it. So it all comes into knowing two things. One, the relationship relationship of tangent with the unit circle. All right, now I know I probably lost maybe some of you once I started saying the unit circle and maybe even gave you some PTSD. You're like, oh no, I hate the unit circle. I can't remember the unit circle. I always forget the points. But ladies and gentlemen, can we just agree that these are the easiest four points to remember on the unit circle, right? Because again, the unit circle basically just means from the center of, from the origin, right? You're just going out one unit. So we have one, zero, zero, one, negative one, zero, and zero comma negative one. Now, when we're dealing with points, any points that are on the unit circle, the tangent function has this relationship for whatever angle that we are dealing with. All right? So if you understand these four points on the unit circle and you remember the tangent relationship, right? Tangent of theta of the angle is y over x. Then you can go and graph any, you can graph the tangent function very, very quickly. So when we're graphing the tangent function, what we're doing is we're graphing it on an x, y plane, or at least in this case, it's going to be a theta y plane. Okay, so just remember theta is going to be your input variable. It's gonna represent the angle that we're looking at, but also so a lot of times we use it with x or use alpha. You can use anything as your input variable. And then y is representing your output, which is going to be on this vertical line. All right, let's go, let's go ahead and pick some easy values. And again, you can use like a table of values. And actually, you know what, let's, let's actually do that. Let's do a table of values so you can see how you can graph this quickly. Now, obviously the video is titled Graph Tangent Fast. So a lot of this, what I would do is just actually do this in my head, but I am slowing it down a little bit just so you guys can see the process of what I'm doing in my head that you can do rather quickly on your own as well. Okay, so we're gonna have our input variable and our output variable. So let's go and pick a point that is going to be easy. What about zero? So if we have an angle that's zero, that's gonna be right here, right? So we have the y over the x, right? Because again, we have x coordinate and a y coordinate, right? So zero over one is obviously going to be zero. So we know that this point is going to work here on the graph. The next point here we could say is pi halves or 90 degrees. I prefer radians, so we'll do pi halves. So at pi halves, we're at one over zero, right? So let's go here. Well, guys, we know one over zero, you can't divide by zero, right? So therefore that is going to be undefined. That is where our asymptote is. Now, before I get to going in to continue doing more and more values or more angles, remember we can also go in the negative direction, right? Because typically if you're familiar with what the tangent graph looks like, you recognize the initial period is going to be right here on the origin. So if I go negative pi halves, what I want you to recognize here is that is also a undefined. Now, I started graphing, I was like, whoa, 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 I didn't explain this yet. So let's get to this here in just a second. So how do we know, does the graph open like this, right? Does the graph look like this? Does the graph look like that? How does this graph look? Is it parabolas? Like what, what does it look like? So again, let's look at our coordinate point here. If I had any point, x, y. Now you might be familiar, you might remember what the coordinate points are in that first quadrant. One thing I want you to recognize is it doesn't even matter. Like, yeah, you can use them. You can use a calculator and find the coordinate point and then plot them. But all I want you to understand is in the first quadrant, you have a positive point over a positive point. So I know whatever my ratio is going to be in positive, whereas, over here, you're dealing with a coordinate point that is going to be a positive and a negative, right? The x coordinate's positive, the y coordinate's negative, so that means over to the left here for all negative angles to negative pi halves, you're gonna be dealing with negative points. That is why we get the graph that's gonna look like this. So again, you hopefully you guys can see here, you're gonna have your asymptotes at pi halves, negative pi halves, you're gonna have the coordinate point zero, and then based on the ratio or the understanding of tangent, you can see the shape of the graph, how it's gonna look. Now, all I want you to understand is again, all this is doing is just repeating itself. Right? Here you're gonna have an asymptote, then you're gonna have another zero. Then you're gonna have another asymptote and at your point zero. So that's why you're gonna get this graph that's just gonna continue, right? This is just what we call the initial period, but then you can go ahead and repeat this because what's happening is every pi is going to be your period, right? Because so the next point here is going to be at pi. And then the next asymptote is at pi halves to three pi halves. And I 
got a little wider, but that's okay. And then you can see you can also go in this negative direction, but that is how you graph the tangent function fast. Once you start adding in some transformations, still you're gonna wanna start with this initial period, and then you just go from there with your um, transformation. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. Hopefully you remember this and remember that and you'll be all set. Cheers.